there YouTube is right so in this video going to compare the Gigabyte B660 Gaming X AX DDR4 motherboard to the Asus Prime B660 Plus D4 the latter there being one of my more popular motherboards on the channel so let's uh let's just get into it all right let me turn some more light on here I don't know if that's going to help now, obvious differences, uh, price-wise, you know, this, of course, is more expensive. Depending on when you get it, it could be anywhere from uh, $20 to, to $50 more than the one on the right. I will say it's worth at least $20 more uh, for a lot of the features it has that I like. This motherboard compares me a lot to, you may have seen it on the channel, this B660M Eris Pro AX DDR4. Now, of course... That's a micro ATX motherboard, but to be honest with you, it's, uh, you know, it does look pretty similar, right? If we can put that at the right angle. Um, so, definitely a, a more quality motherboard from Gigabyte compared to some of their other offerings that they have. Now, let me get that out of here. So, let's talk about uh, what, I, what I see, what I know. Some things I might not know, but uh, both these obviously support 12th gen, right? LGA 1700. Future, supposedly, um, they will support LGA 1800 or uh, 13th gen. Now, if you go to a lot of the motherboard BIOS uh, where it shows what the BIOS revision is, you'll see a lot of them are actually listing uh, future Intel uh, CPU support for that. So previously, you know, i9-12900KS was listed in there as one of the BIOS revisions uh, that they added support for that. Now you're starting to see 13th gen. So some people are able to go and uh, test that on these motherboards. And of course, on this channel, we will eventually get 13th gen. But uh, now, heat sink, obviously a lot bigger over here, right? A lot more surface area. If you guys know anything about you know, heat transfer, uh, cooling, you want uh, obviously more surface area. And so, you know, materials obviously come into play there as well. But uh, I would trust this one a lot more to my i9 um, or my i7. Definitely, uh, this is a motherboard that, you know, if you don't want to overclock, you might want to consider this motherboard if you have an i9 12900K or an i7. 12700K or the i5 12600K. The motherboard on the right, yeah, it will support all of the 12th gens. Um, I just feel like, you know, if you're going to spend that kind of money on those CPUs, why not spend a little bit more on a better motherboard? All right, so what do we have? It appears both of these have the same quantity M.2s. Uh, you can see they all have at least one that has a heat shield. And, of course, the Gigabyte one, you know, looks like a better one. Uh, once again, it would appear there's more surface area on there because, right, you see that this has some fins in it. So this should help keep your M.2 cooler. Now, if I remember correctly, all three M.2s are Gen 4, okay? We'll look at it in a bit. This one obviously has the Wi-Fi, um, in case you don't know what the AX usually stands for on these motherboards. This has an M.2 spot to add Wi-Fi. Um, so it just doesn't have the nice, you know, antenna setup, but you can add a M.2 to this to handle Wi-Fi. RAM slots, both have four RAM slots. Uh, very comparative as far as RAM speed goes. And I, since they're adding uh, support uh, all the time for better memory compatibility, blah, 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 the best place to find out what speeds these will actually handle is the, the motherboard site. But they're uh, most likely both up there in the 5,000 megahertz range, okay? So what do we have for PCIe slots? Both these have a PCIe 4.0 by 16, uh, both armor plated. Then this guy has an additional 4.0 at the bottom and a 3.0. 
And this one, if you could read that from here, Gen 3. Um, what this one doesn't have that that has, this has a PCIe 3.0 by uh, 1, where this does not. Now, there is the occasion, folks, when you actually do need this slot over the, the big one. Um, I have seen some devices that uh, have gotten a little warm plugged into a uh, full size versus uh, the smaller one. But uh, for the most part, you know, I would much rather have this set up. All right. Now, looking at your, uh, your PC case, maybe you're interested in these for a PC case. Both of these are good as far as if you have two USB 3.0s on your case, um, or 3.2, whatever it may be. Both of these have a USB 3.0 header. Of course, if you have four of those on your case, uh, neither one of these motherboards is going to do you much good. If you have Type-C Charlie on your front panel of your case, both of these have a header there, so that's good. Both have four SATAs, and it's really not until, uh, and here's the other one over here, other set of two, it's really not until you get to Z690, folks, that you are going to see, um, you know, a larger amount of those, right? I think my ASRock has eight on it. CMOS battery, uh, kind of an odd location on this motherboard over here. And on this one, it's sitting over here, which is kind of more of a standard spot, somewhere in this range usually. So we talked M.2s, uh, USB 2.0s, both of these have two of those. Front panel connectors are over here. The Gigabyte has a protective uh, enclosure around theirs, which is always nice. And this should be like a uh, reset button, USB. Uh, actually, let me double check what that is, folks. Sorry, reset switch. Um don't believe you have one of those over here so what's nice about this one you shouldn't have to pull out your uh, battery if so let's say folks you put some ram in here uh, then you change the settings uh, xmp base speeds 2666 maybe it says it can handle 3200 megahertz maybe you try and push that to 3400 and then your computer fails to boot uh, to Windows or to even show you a screen. Uh, if you try that a few times and it still doesn't work, you know, pulling out the battery, hitting the reset switch on this one uh, should get you there back to uh, basically back to the base speed and you'll go in and change it back to 3200 megahertz or, or whatever the case may be. All right. So, fan headers, you guys might care about that. Um, I can see two, four, and then that appears to be it, folks. Four fan headers, and then you have a CPU and a CPU optional. Okay, so six total for fans. Over on the right side, we have two here. We have a third one here, and that is all, folks. That is all I see. There's two, excuse me, over here for the uh, the CPU. So five versus six. Um, addressable RGB. They both should have that. Okay, I definitely see it here and RGB there. Over on the left, they're not white. This is addressable, and that is uh, RGB there. So that is uh, that's covered. Let's go ahead and uh, rotate this, all right, so you guys can see what's on the I/O shield. And you really shouldn't uh, handle your motherboards like I do on this channel, but uh, all right. Let's see. I'm going to line this up for y'all. Whoop. Luckily, I have a lot of motherboards, so if I damage one, we just, we just move on to the next one, you know? All right. So I think you can see the full picture. Now, 
Obviously, folks, what's the big thing that jumps out of you? Built-in I.O. shield. I'd pay $20 just to have that, okay? So that is uh, worth it to me. It looks like we gotta we got to slide down a little bit more. All right. Wi-Fi antennas, right? What are the main differences, folks? Uh, VGA over here, for whatever reason you need it. Both of them have HDMI and DisplayPort, so that's good. Both of these should be Ethernet 2.5. This one only has three of the uh, USB uh, 3.2. Uh, we got Gen 1 and two Gen 2s over here. We have two Gen 1s and one Gen 2. Then you have a spot. Actually, I'm pointing at the wrong one. The one above it is for a USB BIOS update. All right. And then four USB 2.0s over here, and only two over here. Type C Charlie connector here, with the uh, with this motherboard surprisingly it does not have it. Um, I'm actually really surprised about that. That's kind of a important thing to me, folks. You know, anybody has an Android phone, uh, and they like to just do the Type C Charlie. To transfer video and other stuff faster that's uh that's kind of a bummer um so you know i won't be using this to edit now over here folks what else is different audio connectors right limited you've got a line in your headphone out or line out microphone over on the right line in headphone or line out microphone then you've got side speaker, rear speaker, and a uh, subwoofer. So you could get rocking with this. The only thing it doesn't have that I'd rather have is uh, fiber optic. But uh, yeah, there you go, folks. There's a comparison between these two. Personally, this is uh, this guy's worth at least twenty more dollars than that to me. Uh, a lot of other stuff, you know, very comparative, obviously. Um, and depending on what CPU you go with, I would, you know, for an i3, you know, might as well go there, right? Uh, if you hate IO shields like I do, maybe you buy this one. If you've got an i9-12900, I say go over here. If you've got a 900, i9-12900K, you know... Uh, if you're not going to go to Z690, this is probably a good place to go. Celeron, don't even look at these. Go, you know, with even crappier motherboard. Pentium, don't look at either one of these. Go to a crappier motherboard. Uh, but, yeah, there you go, folks. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.